first segment is going to be daily distractions. We're going to always start with daily distractions, which are headlines that we think are kind of either silly or misleading, that kind of thing. It, it's kind of our version of your, your daily news before we get into our main topics. And so uh, Peter had an article here. Do you want to talk about this? Yeah, anybody but Trump. Uh, the evangelicals who plan to vote for Trump. This was on uh, France 24. And if you follow uh, the Drudge Report, as I do, this was one of the top stories. Or it was, yeah, it was one of the above the fold stories. And you can tell, you know, the implication is Texas evangelicals are voting against Donald Trump. Now you read into the story and you find that it's eh, kind of misleading. Uh, it turns out that Donald Trump is beating. Uh, well, Joe Biden or Bernie Sanders among evangelicals by about a 65 to 24 percent margin. Uh, so I suppose that's 10 percent, 10 percent undecided. That's a huge, huge uh, margin. And so to suggest that he has a problem with evangelicals is absolutely ridiculous. But that's the point. This is this is a thinly disguised political advertisement. Um, you know, the, the, the very idea that that this is relevant, that Donald Trump has a problem with evangelicals is is absurd. Now, should he have a problem with evangelicals? I mean, that's a different that's a different question. Some people have, have raised that. But but this is just pointing out that there are evangelicals who are going to vote against Donald Trump. Well, OK. And they're going to be black voters who vote against Joe Biden or against Bernie Sanders in November. Um, if 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 Trump wins 30% of the African American vote, that would be huge. Okay, that's a story. But if uh, if uh, African American voting patterns are in line with previous years, that's not a story. So this is a dog that's not barking. It's not even the dog that didn't bark. It's this is a nothing nothing story from start to finish. So uh, I would just absolutely disgust isn't the right word. I just you know you have to roll your eyes at these things, but. But so many of the stories that you see, they're trying to build a narrative. Uh, they're not trying to tell you the news. They're not trying to inform you. They're trying to tell you what to think. And, and that's all this is. They're trying to, they know you're probably not going to read the, uh, the story. They're not, you're not going to read past the headline. The implication is the president's in trouble. Ooh, maybe you should vote against him too. Uh, maybe you should be discouraged. So, yeah. Just a, and you, a you, you bring story. up a good point, which is one of the reasons that I, I, I wanted to do this, this segment, uh, the Daily Distractions, is that uh, the truth is, well, I think it's been the truth for a long time. A lot of people only read the headlines of an article. They won't get into the meat of it. And mm -hmm. uh, what happens a lot of times is the articles will even contradict the, the headline. Um, and it, it, it's, 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 it, that's, that's infuriate, infuriating when they do that. Uh, and, right. and it's pretty common. And this article basically does uh, when you sh when it shows that Trump has this huge uh, margin uh, margin of victory among evangelicals that basic that that it doesn't uh, directly contradict what the headline says, but it it contradicts what the headline implies. The story is not at all what they want you to think. So. And this is actually from from France, right? France 24. Is that right? France, France 24. Uh, clicking around, it looks like it's all English language. So I assume that they have a French language counterpart, um, but that they, they they focus on France-centered issues. But this one happened to be about about Donald Trump and the uh, Texas vote. So I, I don't know exactly uh, you know why that is, but uh, it's something that caught my eye because it did make the Drudge Report. So a lot of people, a lot of Republicans would have read this this week, so. Interesting. And I, I want to add that uh, later on, what I've been doing is uh, on our YouTube, uh, mm -hmm. I'll cut up the show by topic, and I will also include links uh, to the articles for, for people on uh, Viewback or people that are viewing now, and they're interested in finding that article. Uh, I will put the links in there. So that, that should be up by tomorrow sometime on the, uh, on the YouTube. So... Um, I have a daily distraction as well that I thought was a little bit was kind of a little a little bit fun, a little bit tongue in cheek uh, because of 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 where where we live or you know where I'm living at least right now. I know you're kind of uh, going back and forth, 
Sure. Um, but uh, this has been on everybody's minds, the daylight savings time. And so it says here, this is a CNN article. It says daylight savings year round could save lives, improve sleep and other benefits. And um, what, what I think is funny about this, we talked a little bit off the mic uh, before the show, uh, was that, the, you know, in Arizona, we don't use daylight savings time. Uh, we That's have the right. same time here year round. We got intended. Exactly. Uh, and we're alone with Hawaii. Hawaii is the only other state that does that in the United States right now that doesn't use daylight savings time. So I just want to say, you know, Arizona and Hawaii were obviously uh, way ahead of the curve on this issue um, because we don't use this, although it does affect us. For instance, it affected us today because we base the time that we start on on Eastern Standard Time. Right. And for people that are not familiar, what happens in Arizona is uh, yesterday, Arizona was Mountain Standard Time. Uh, today, it's Pacific Standard Time. So basically what happens is instead of being two hours off sync with the East Coast, now we're three hours off sync with the East Coast. So that's right. the way that, that it does affect Arizona. But it's just because uh, the rest of you people are still uh, involved with this madness and <laughs> keep perpetuating it. <laughs> so otherwise, though, it doesn't affect our sleep. It doesn't affect anything else. But I just thought this was interesting, and I, I think it's kind of – it's a little bit tongue-in-cheek, but it's also uh, because of where I live, because I do live in Arizona. Uh, I do kind of feel that little bit of superiority when people have these debates <laughs> about daylight savings time uh, because we, we don't – we're just not involved with the madness, and mm -hmm. it is madness. So daylight savings time, I think, is completely outdated. Uh, I don't think it was necessarily a good idea to begin with. I think it's one of those things where somebody said, hey, why don't we do this? And everybody around the table said, hey, that's a great idea. Let's do that. Um, but, you know, and, because it, go ahead, go ahead, Peter. Yeah. And, and the thinking was, you know, this would be better for people in different professions uh, because you'd get home and there would still be daylight at the end of the day. But, you know, the thing is, uh, there's nothing, there is nothing that daylight savings time does that couldn't be resolved by adjusting schedules if if that's a problem uh adjust adjust the schedule of whatever of whatever uh, event you're holding if you need to adjust school schedules in the winter because it's too dark in the evening we'll have it an hour earlier you know i i find it absolutely mind-blowing that people think that they have to build their schedules around the official time set by the government as though they don't have free will they don't have the ability to make decisions uh, you know, or around, around, um, you know, where the sun is. It, my goodness. It, the arguments are, and in here it says it could save lives. Well, lots of things could save lives. Does it save lives? Well, they're not willing to even commit to that in the headline. So I'm going to bet, and I haven't read this article. You brought this article up. I'm going to bet when you dig into this article, you find that there's not much evidence, but it could be. And if we run enough studies, we can p-hack it. Uh, you know, something to, to get into a scientific journal, something has to have a five percent chance, or ninety-five percent chance, rather, of being statistically significant. So there's a five percent chance or less of it being just a, st a statistical fluke. So if you run twenty studies, you should get, you know, that, that the math doesn't actually work that way. But if you run enough studies, eventually one of these will look like it's statistically significant, and um, yeah. Oh, in my research, I found that Americans don't like it. Yes, I do not like it at all. I didn't like waking up an hour earlier for my morning meeting this morning. Um, but yeah, saves lives and energy and prevents crime. Well, maybe, you know, again, the headline says could. Um, I think that uh, I, I think he's putting way too much stock into this. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I mean, um, so he has he has these kind of five five. You know, he says that th th these five assertions that he makes. Um, you know, so right. one number one that lives would be saved. Uh, he says the evening rush hour is twice as fatal as as the morning for various reasons. Far more people on the road, mark more, more alcohols and drivers' bloodstreams. People are right. hurrying to get home. More uh, and more children are enjoying outdoor unsupervised play. Uh, right. This fatal vehicle on pedestrian crashes increase threefold when the sun goes down. Right. But uh, this comes down to it comes down to, to bad planning. You know, people could go to work earlier and leave work earlier. 
They could, we could start school earlier. We can leave school earlier, but people choose not to do that unless the time officially changes. Um, just, just bad, bad planning, I guess. Yeah, I, I am not an advocate of the daylight savings time at all. Uh, yeah. So you know, there's no more daylight. You don't actually get daylight. It's it's all. Yeah, it's it's, it's all smoke and mirrors as far as right. I'm concerned. Yeah, we're trying to psychologically trick ourselves into thinking that there's more daylight. I guess that's just silly. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. All right, did we want to go ahead and start getting into our our main topics tonight? Oh, I thought we had some more daily distractions. Oh, you did, that's right. You had a couple more, actually. Let me see here yeah. if I can. What was the next one that you wanted to talk about? Uh, the Denver Democrat. Denver Democrat. Let me see. There we go. Yeah. Denver Democrat faces backlash after tweeting solidarity for spreading coronavirus. Um, you know, I, I, I saw this on Facebook. I know you saw this on Facebook. And what did people say? Uh, it, it was your Republican friend saying, oh, Republicans would never post something this hateful. They would never wish for somebody to die. And that's just not true. Both sides do it. Uh, people of all political persuasions publish things, say things that are, in this case, it was obviously a joke. You know, somebody else uh, joked that they were going to go to a, a Trump rally with coronavirus. And she tweeted in response, yeah, solid, solidarity, which is something that um, probably more people on the, I'm going to, I'm going to guess more people on the left, on the right, get the reference there, that that's a sort of sarcastic tongue in cheek way of saying yes, that she really didn't mean that she wanted somebody to do this. But just, just the, the amount of outrage over this, the fact that this was on Fox news, uh, this was all over, especially right leaning media. Yeah. These people are sick. Oh, come on. You know, yeah. If we want to, if we want to go through Donald Trump's Twitter feed, has he ever uh, said something that might be offensive, something uh, that 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 might be over the line? Gee, I can't think of anything. My goodness, you know, for 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 one of the Trumps to basically uh, uh, make an appeal to political correctness here is absolutely laughable, and you know. We, we should we should laugh at, at them. Yeah, look at the the overuse of emojis. Does that does that look uh, sincere to you? That is absolutely a hundred percent sarcastic. Right. Yeah, I can see that the uh, the little the little laughing things. Right. Um, it's got the little uh, uh, white supremacist symbol there, there which, is, <laughs> which is pretty pretty messed up. I think you know. I don't know how to say her name. I haven't said her name. I've just said the Democrat from Denver so far. <laughs> but it's Candy. Uh, I, I have no idea. Debaca? I don't know. I don't that doesn't know. look like a. That doesn't look like a Spanish name. Just C D E. I've never seen that before. So I guess maybe Candy Debaca. We'll just we'll just stick with that. Yeah. Yeah, you know these these kinds of things. There was a similar uh, thing going on. I wish I had the article um, where they were talking about supposedly um, Trump is really uh, paranoid about uh, reporters deliberately giving him uh, Corona on Air Force One. In fact, it's it's trending on Twitter. I want to get better at that as far as hitting the things that are tr are trending even as the show is going on. And that was one of the things that was trending was Air Force One. And I click on the link to see, well, why is Air Force One trending? And that was why, because supposedly there's this story where um, uh, Trump is is concerned that uh, journalists are going to give him uh, Corona. And, and I kind of feel like, you know, even if that's true, I, I really don't care. <laughs> you know, I really don't care. Um, you know, if, if, if he wants to go into a, a bunker somewhere or something like that because he feels that uh, he needs to, hey, that's his prerogative, you know. Uh, I'm going to be talking a, a lot more about uh, Corona in my my uh, main segment, but uh, yeah, it, it, it gets kind of silly at some point. And I know Peter, you had one more article, right? Yes, I had the uh, the orphan monkeys article. All right, so let's get that one up. 
I can get this. Uh, we value your privacy. I don't. Little we cook. Play. Oh, little, there we go. So oh, by the way, the Daily Manager. Star, all of these British tabloids. If you go through the options and you look at how many cookies you're accepting, it's just an absurd number. Um, it's not even practical to to winnow them down because it's like hundreds of people they're sharing your information with. So sorry for sharing that article. Yeah, well, it's, it's actually really frustrating, uh, all the, yeah. the cookies and stuff. But uh, if you have um, antivirus software, that helps a little bit because it'll get rid of that stuff periodically and dump it all out. But. All right. Orphan monkeys forced to serve beers and play air hockey with kids in bar jobs. <laughs> now, <laughs> this is... This is a hilarious, B adorable, and C such a ridiculous take on this. The fact that that we're treating this like slavery. I mean, my goodness, they're monkeys. They are monkeys. Do we know that they that they don't like uh, being around people? I assume if they're not being aggressive, they are wild animals. Let's make no mistake. Even these small monkeys are dangerous if they don't like what's going on. Uh, they are much, <laughs> much stronger um, than, than you can imagine. So the very idea that they're being forced as though this is a, you know, a modern day analog of slavery is absolutely ridiculous. And, and what were they going to do with their lives if they weren't working in bars exactly? Were they going to go to law school and become monkey lawyers? <laughs> what was their backup plan? This is so, so dumb. It, it seems to me that this is a a fun thing you know they're playing games they're you know, they say serving beer i don't know this this to me falls just a bit short of animal cruelty it's also interesting because the, the you know as i'm reading some of this it, they're talking about that this is i guess the results of the fact that a lot of these monkeys are quote unquote orphans because they're killed by their parents are killed by farmers because they're mm -hmm. destroying their crops. Yeah, there's so a real it's story. Like, so it's kind of like, well, it's not, actually that sounds very legitimate. I mean, if they're pest animals, then farmers do have a right to kill them in order to, because the crops are more important than these animals. Um, but at the, the other side of it is, well, what do you do with the quote unquote orphans? Well, at least they're doing something with them and they're not slaughtering them. Right. <laughs> so sure. it, it's a real dilemma uh, because we don't want, um, India, uh, there's a story I, I didn't send over to you, but India, uh, this week, there was a, there was a report that a lot of their government buildings are overrun with monkeys because they won't kill the monkeys. And I can see the argument for that. You know, they're very human-like creatures. They're very intelligent. We don't want to be cruel to them. We, we feel like we have a greater obligation to them than we have to other animals. I, I, I get that, you know, and I understand the dilemma about that the farmers have because they're trying to eat. You know, am I going to allow a monkey to take my my um, living away from me? Because these farmers, I'm guessing, are not are not rolling in the dough. They're just barely <laughs> making ends meet. Uh, you know, these are third world farmers, and so this this entire thing is so woke. It's so wrong headed. It's such a first world take on third world problems that. Um, on one hand, I laugh, but it, it's it also makes you just a little bit angry uh, how privileged this writer is, and they just can't see it. That's pretty funny. That, that, that is. Pretty